There we go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I'm Pam Joswicki. I'm the owner of Powerful Purpose, and this is the planning series that I do usually on Fridays at noon, but today I'm bringing it to you on Thursday morning because tomorrow is Good Friday. So, um, I like to take that day off. So I am not, I'm not gonna be doing anything tomorrow other than what I need to do spiritually. So last week we started talking a little bit about the difference between being productive and being busy. And what a difference there is in between the two of them. Um, I know for many, many years I wore the uh, badge of honor. I used to call it the martyr badge saying I can't do this because I am so busy. Um, look at me. I get up at, you know, the crack of dawn and I get 12 things done before I even get to the office in the morning. And isn't, aren't I wonderful because I get all of this done, right? So it was busy, 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 busy. Um, when we have a tendency to show up busy, what are we disguising? What are we kind of trying to take our attention from by filling all of this to-do list with tons of things to do? When, when we're busy, at least when I was busy like that, I would be afraid that if I stopped, I would either be considered lazy um, I would be considered unworthy, right? Like if she's not, if she's not filling her day and running around crazy, what is she really getting done? Um, so all of this stuff started happening. And as I allowed myself to think that way, and most of you know, as I talk about head trash, right? If I allowed myself to fill my head with head trashes, if I am not running, if I am not up at five o'clock in the morning doing 10 loads of laundry, going grocery shopping and getting to the office by seven, then, then who am I? What am I worth? So ha used to have a lot of those feelings. I don't know if you guys ever felt that way or you, yes, right? Donna's shaking her head. Yes. Um, and from time to time, I still feel that way, but what helps me be grounded and will go through the mindset of busyness versus productivity, right? Goes through the mindset is that when we're busy, we're just doing, we're getting up and we're getting on that hamster wheel and we're not stopping. We just don't even think about it. We just jump on and we move forward and that's the end of it. And there's no mission to our day. So when we get to the end of the day, we still have a really long list of to-dos because we keep on adding stuff on it. And even though we have a couple of checks on it that we got a few things done, it's still not giving our sense of completion. And we're depleting all of that energy because we're just doing. We have no mission. We get preoccupied with the weaknesses um i'm not because like we go back to like i am not good enough so i need to do this or um i'm lazy if i'm not going 24 7. so we try we're just making these excuses to keep ourselves moving forward but what are we really doing in the long run are we accomplishing what we want to accomplish back in my corporate life for 28 years, as most of you know, um, I, was, I was showing up busy all the time until I became chief operating officer. And I started becoming a leader and not a doer. So there's a difference, right? We could be leaders, we don't, and we don't have to hold the title of a CEO, CFO, COO, CSO, all of these different titles to be a good leader. Being a leader is being a good leader of our lives, and that's where we need to start. So when I became chief operating officer, I, was not, I wasn't supposed to be a doer anymore. I was supposed to be a leader. And as I was shifting to be more productive and not busy, 
um, there was a lot of pushback that was going on and pushback within myself. Um, thank you. Pushback, pushback, uh, with, with the team that always had me being a doer, right? Always saw me running around crazy. Oh, she must be important because she's busy. Now, all of a sudden, I was showing up differently. I was, show, I was trying very hard to show up differently. Showing up differently as the COO, which meant that I needed to learn how to use my dream team effectively. I needed to use and delegate and learn how to delegate and let things go, which is very difficult when you're a busy person because you nobody else could do it better than you. <laughs> and you get caught up in that whole thing of, oh no, I might as well just do it myself because it's gonna take too long to show somebody else and then I'm gonna show somebody else and they're not gonna do it right anyways. So I might as well just go and do it myself. So then that adds on to our to-do list and now here we are, we're busy again, right? So as we become better leaders of our life, just as I was be, trying to be a better leader as a COO of that company, and I, I attained that position after 26 years, so I rose up through the ranks from full secretary to COO, so I had to change my mindset a lot along the way um, but that was the biggest leap that was the hardest for me because that meant that in a way I made it to the top that I had been struggling to do all of those years that now I was there. And what did that mean? It was I good enough, but no, I felt that I wasn't. So I became busy because people around me, uh, was making it very difficult for me to become the leader that I wanted to be. So setting those boundaries, right, of, of our time and setting those boundaries of what's important to us, not only in our career or we're all business owners here, right? And we're all female founders. So we're, we're really um, hold many different hats in this situation. Um, and we're female founders of businesses that aren't, a product of somebody else that we're selling for. We're selling for ourselves. We're promoting ourselves. And there's a difference. There, it's, sales is difficult. It takes a lot of energy and consistency to begin with, right? And no matter what we do, we are in the sales business because we have to sell ourselves or sell our product or sell our services. And that takes a lot of consistency. And when we're busy, we don't have time to be consistent because we're busy doing all the other doer stuff, right? So does that make sense? Like, yeah. So the more I, the more I work around this, the more it comes up more, right? So, I mean, I have, I have a coach that I work with myself and he has a coach that he works with. And that's just... That's just the way it is, right? And um, even though he's been doing this for 14 or 15 years, he still has a coach to help him understand um, we always need another set of eyes on the landscape of what's going on. Because sometimes when we're in our yard looking around, we're cl too close to what needs to be tended to, right? But if we bring somebody else in, they could see, oh, oh if you put those flowers over there, it's gonna help you look better, right? And it's gonna brighten up your yard. So it's the same thing like with, what, with coaching and, and or graphic designer or even purging houses. Like we need people's separate eyes to look at stuff for us so we can navigate through the busyness and we could become more productive. And when we're more productive, this is the exciting side of things. This is when we get clearer, right? This is when we do have that mission. The things that we want to do are on my list and on our list because we're not filling our list up with all this other stuff that drives us crazy. Like, okay, so now I, when, I, when, um, when I was at the corporate world, I had a housekeeper and she came in twice, twice a month 
And I loved it. And that was one of those, I talk about those non-negotiable items, right? That we can't get rid of. Um, that was a non-negotiable. Even when I uh, decided that we're gonna, we decided I was gonna start Powerful Purpose um, and I wasn't gonna draw a salary right away for a while. It had to be a way that we figured out that I still needed her to come because I was going to be working on building a business and that even though I was in the home, it still took a lot of time um, to do that. So I found a way. So having her come in is helping me be more productive inside my business. Now, going through the times that we're going through right now, she's not coming in right now. <laughs> so, and we're all living here 24 um, seven. <laughs> so it's a little different. But it reminds me, right? It reminds me of how blessed I am that I'm able to have her be here, okay? So being productive is really figuring out what we need to make ourselves feel blessed and what we need in our lives and our businesses to grow it the way that we wanna grow it. That is really the formula to being more productive, getting a clearer vision. Um, focusing on our strengths, like what are the things that you're really good at and really love to do? Focus on that. Focus on those things. I would actually, I would encourage um, to do a brain dump around just what your strengths are and how are you implementing those strengths in your daily life. When we aren't focusing on what we're good at, we, that's when we start getting depleted, right? And that's when we're not feeling fulfilled. And when we're not feeling fulfilled, what ends up happening? We go back to being doers because it's comfortable there, even though we don't want to be there. Because sometimes we're in situations that aren't comfortable, but it's what we know. So we have a tendency to go back to that. So being productive is really allowing yourself to understand and celebrate all of those successes, all of those strengths that you have. That's why in the planner, in my Powerful Purpose Planner, at the bottom of each week, there's a place to, to celebrate, okay, what is that one success that you've had for this week because that helps you focus on the strengths. Even in the back of each month, there's a self-assessment page. What are your strengths? Where, where were your weaknesses this past month? What did you keep on going back to? What do you want to do better? Um, focusing on that. Um, the other thing that I find as I'm being more productive and it goes back to the to-do list is utilizing what is important and what's urgent because a lot of times we think all of these things that are important are urgent i don't know like checking emails taking phone calls right like all of those things yes are they important items absolutely can they be um, categorize that you get back to them in a time block? Yes, because then those could be important items. So determining in your business and even in your life, what is urgent and what's important? Because then we have a better way of managing what we want out of our lives to become better leaders. That sound, sound like something that, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, jump, what's important, jumping on, on social media first thing in the morning and start scrolling. And then all of a sudden what happens, you know, an hour goes by and what could you have done that was urgent or what could have you done to fulfill yourself, to feel more engaged in your strengths than scrolling through social media, getting caught up in other people's drama, or feeling <laughs> needle movers, exactly. That's exactly what it is. You know, finding those things to move you forward is so important because as much as we don't want to say that uh, 
we don't want to act like teenage girls, okay, and get caught up all in that drama that goes on. Um, sometimes it's hard to step away from it because it's so ingraining, right? Like it draws you in and then you get sucked in there. And then before you know it, you're part of it and you're answering and you're like, why am I doing this? Stop, right? So finding that way to, to actually stop it before it happens is, is really crucial in helping us become more productive in our days, all right? So when we're making, when, when we're planning for the week ahead, another thing that's huge I find for productive, don't overload your to-do list because let's be realistic. Remember, when we do, when we sit and do our planning, either whenever you're going to do your planning for your week, if, if it's a Friday afternoon or a Sunday or a Saturday morning, we, we need to set time aside to plan for our week ahead. Before we do it, do a brain dump, get everything out of, out of the way. And then you look at that brain dump and say, okay, what are the three maybe essential things I truly need to get done next week? And then focus on those three things. Your rest of your list, you could always utilize the DEER system, which is out on, um, out on the website under resources, which everyone I think knows my website, but I'm going to put it in the chat. And you go out to resources. You could get a whole bunch of free resources on helping you learn how to uh, plan to be more productive. Okay, and, and the DEER technique is one of those. Um, learning how to delegate, execute, automate, or recycle your tasks. So as we distinguish between being busy, right, and being productive, I'm gonna try, oh no, I guess it didn't work. Huh. I was gonna, I was, since it was us on here, I was gonna see if I could do a, oh, look at all this fun stuff I'm finding. I could have went live on Facebook right from Zoom. I could have just clicked live on Facebook. That would have went up too while we were doing all of that. Pretty sweet. Okay, so all of these new things to find out how to be more productive. Um, but I was gonna do a poll to see on the scale of one to 10, and you guys could just say it or type it, whatever you want to do. Where do you think you fall in being productive? Okay, I'll start. This is Donna. Um, I would say on average, I'm pretty much an eight or a nine. And, and that's really not a big surprise because I'm a professional organizer. So I, I, everything you're saying absolutely resonates. And I do everything that you're saying, um, either almost exactly the way you do it or a slight variation of it. Um, I used to do a weekly to do. Um, I do a daily to do now. And um, it's not that I get up and the first thing I do is write a hundred things on a list. Not at all. The, the to to-do list that I carry forward from day to day is a carry forward. So it's the, what are the things that must be done today, this week, this month? And so it's that format that I now use. This, is, this has worked the best for me after all these years. I used to do it a different way. I used to do a hundred things on a piece of a tablet, you know, on a piece of paper, right. then I would prioritize, then I would group, then I would chunk, and then I would tackle them. And my thing was always, oh, I have to get through the entire list that's the busy work, right? So mm -hmm. everything you said resonated. So now what I've done is I've adopted a new format um, recently, combination of things that I've learned through, through your, your um, planner, through other people's journals, at just different resources, right? That we mm -hmm. trust and love. And so now it's, here's what I'm gonna do today. Here's what I'm gonna do this week. Here's what I'm gonna do this month. And it's always forcing me to make sure that, oh, if I was saying I needed to get that done this month, oh, no, no, that became really important. That had to get moved to this week, okay? Or maybe I put something on the today and then my day blew up because it happens. You know, you, right. especially right now, you need to be there for family. You need to be there for the sick dog, you know, whatever, right? The, the parent that needs an emergency something, right? Mm -hmm. So 
you know, we're doing all these things. So maybe the today kind of got pushed off to the this week, but it still is really in the forefront of my thinking because I was able to document it. And, and I think the statistic is, and Pam, you would know this better than I, but I think the statistic is if you listen, you retain something like 10 or 15% of what the person says. Maybe it's more like 20%. I don't know. But let's mm -hmm. just say it's somewhere between 10 and 25% if you just listen. If you write, I got my notes over here. You'll be proud of me. I took a whole page of notes already. All right. So um, I just like to take notes because I've learned from, from some of the best that you retain that much more when you write it down, even if you never read those notes again, exactly. and we're all guilty of that, right? But if you write it down, you've retained a little bit more, not even a little bit more, it's like something like 40% versus 10%. I don't know what the statistics are, but mm -hmm. something like that. No, it's like 40%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. a big deal. So, um, and I do have a place to put these notes and, and I can refer back to them. Well, I could also star or highlight the big things and take away this is this is my new thing i take away one to three things from everything that i participate in again looking at the needle movers what are the things that are really going to impact me either today and what i'm doing this week this month this quarter however i want to look at it right but if i'm going to take the time to invest to be here today right we're all busy right yeah. then oops, sorry clock in the background um then what are the one to three things that I can highlight that are those takeaways? Or maybe it's something that's solidifying a thought in my head, like, ah, she thinks that way too. Yes, that's mm -hmm. exactly, that's exactly how I want to do that going forward. So that's awesome. Thank you. That is so awesome. Yeah, great tips and great shares. I really appreciate that. And, and June, you say you're about a six right now in being productive. That's about, about where I am. I, I know I need to work harder. I know I, uh, I uh, say six because I am productive in the sense that I accomplish what I know I need to do that particular day. I'm not always thinking the next day or the next month. So that's what I need to do. Mm -hmm. More future planning, right? Like yeah. the big, big picture and then reverse engineer into that with all the little steps that we need to do to get to that big picture. Um, I think one of the big things is too, is that just owning where we are, right? Like just accepting it, accepting where we are right now. And if you're a six right now with everything else going on, accepting that so we don't beat ourselves up about, oh, I'm only a six and I really should be a nine. And what's my problem? How come I can't get this down pat? And right. Sometimes we're just that way. And sometimes we're very productive because we're naturally a six. And, and that's okay. Yes, you could maybe pick up a tip here or there or do something a little different here or there, little tiny little two millimeter shifts, right, to make a difference. But in reality, not everybody could be tens. <laughs> and that's okay. And then there's some people that are ones and twos, and maybe that's what they're capable of right? Maybe that's what they could do at that particular moment. I know back in the day, I was probably um, in productive wise, if we go by the definition and everything that we were talking about, I probably was a three because I was so busy doing everything else. I wasn't really productive, even though I was getting things done, but were they productive things that I was filling my day with? So just because we're a number today doesn't mean we can't be a different number tomorrow. But the basic thing is, is just owning where we are and giving ourselves permission to say, you know what, <laughs> this is where I am today and it's okay. I always say, as long as we don't stay in one spot for way too long, that's not healthy, then, then we need to work on trying to change maybe those limited beliefs or right. Like, change through the process there um but if we're a six right now i think that's an awesome thing especially with with a lot of stuff you know with all this different stuff going on going into week four of this is surreal to me um 
interesting sometimes I feel a little guilty because I feel like I've done pretty well you know what I mean like oh I'm kind of doing good and I'm an extrovert that's stuck inside so it's it's kind of like it's kind of weird to me right but um there's going to be an interesting blog going out on Monday called I love this quarantine stuff so take a look for that in your in in your email um because it was a lot of fun to write. It was a lot of fun to write. So being productive, increasing your dream team to help you be more productive, okay? So I've recently um, hired a content writer that is coaching me to be a better writer. Great. So I'm taking creative writing courses with her um, and it has been so much fun, so much fun. So finding different ways to regroup, to, to spark my energy, to be a different business owner and to be a different leader, to help others and help my clients is just amazing because now this is another thing in my tool belt that I'm going to be able to share with my clients on different tips of, you know, content writing for marketing purposes and doing some creative writing and stuff like that. So it's been, <clears throat> it's been a lot of fun. It's been really, really awesome. And you'll see one of my first pieces will be Monday. Um, so that's been great w working with her. So we're coming up. I'm going to go for about five more minutes because I want to be respectful of everybody's time, okay? And learning how to regroup. So we get, first off, we'll just, the productivity part of it is, and we talked through some of it going, you know, writing things down, write it down. I'm just going to go through the list, cut down the to-do list. Like we talked about, right? Setting the boundaries around the big tasks and the small tasks. Really try to stop multitasking because it's very distracting from going one thing to another and trying to regroup yourself to start all over again. Um, <laughs> Donna will love this. Organize your space not only your physical space, but um, your mental space too, right? We have to make room in our brain um, and we have to be kind to it. Um, track and limit time. I found this very interesting, right? The time blocking. I'm, I'm a big fan of time blocking. I'm a big fan of the 10 minute slots. I'm a big fan of um, setting your timer to a task that you don't you might not really like to do, so say folding laundry, right? That's one of mine. Um, I set a timer and I said, okay, let me see how long it actually takes me to fold one load and put away, put away those clothes. So it allows me to understand that the next time it comes up for me, that I could say to myself, you know what? That only took you six minutes, Pam, or five minutes. Just go get it done, right? So understanding how long certain tasks take is very beneficial when it comes to being productive. Make sure you set your goals. Go ahead, Donna. Thank you. I wanted to just share something on that if I could. It's, it's a financial thing that actually turned into a really, really great organizational thing. And someone else gave me this idea, which was really cool. So um, as small business owners, um, you know, not to get into too much personal stuff, but um, as small business owners, you know, how do we pay ourselves, right? How do we, how do we actually write that check? You know, we take that owner's draw, you know, we, how do we pay ourselves in our businesses, especially when we have other people on our team that we are writing the check for every week or two weeks or every month or whatever it is. And so one person said to me, well, how are you recording your time? I'm like, oh, well, I'm working all the time. I'm 50, 60 hours a week in my business, right? So I'm a really big Excel fan, right? I was working in, I, I was back in the day um, when Excel came out and I really love Excel. So I built this fun little thing that I use literally all the time, even now during the stay at home and while I'm not physically out in the field, because there's things that I do prior to this, there's things that I would do that were field related work billable to the client. Then there were things that I would call my administrative stuff. But some of that administrative stuff is very, very important stuff. It's like getting on these calls. It's like, call it business development. You could call it administrative stuff, which is doing your QuickBooks or whatever. So again, not to get too financial here or too, 
too numbers driven. But what I did was I built a really simple um, Excel spreadsheet, which allowed me to keep track of my time. So who I was doing it for, the business, the client, whomever, so who it was billable for, the amount of time or, or a little summary of what it is that I was doing in administrative work, um, you know, bill paying, checkbook, mm -hmm. you know, balance and checkbook, whatever. Um, and then the actual time that I spent doing it. So this, so this is, you know, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. This is a one hour block of time with you this morning. And I put that down at my various rates of pay, either my administrative pay, my business development pay, or my field yeah. pay. And I could clearly see how I was spending my time and I could tie it back financially to know if it was a needle mover or not. So that was it's a really, beautiful. really cool thing that really helped me. So if you guys want me to share my Excel spreadsheet with you at some point in time, I'd be happy to share it with both. That would be wonderful. If you wanted to share that out, you could definitely email that. And um, I could, when I send this video out to everybody, if you don't mind, I could attach that and it could be a tool for them to use. That's a beautiful idea because it's so true is because we talk about, you know, what are those revenue generated activities, right? And how many of those do you want in your day? And when we sometimes think certain things aren't RGAs, they truly are. Um, and that goes on so many different levels of hiring people. Well, if you could do it at this amount and they could do it at this amount, right? And then you bill them out at this amount, you're really, got the gap there that you're making back inside the business. So, and that goes back, that's more about being productive, productive with your time. That's a great tip. I'm glad you brought that up because it's really important for, especially for uh, business owners. Um, it's extremely important how we run our days and what we're doing with our days. So being able to time block that, tie it financially, tie it emotionally, tie it physically with movement, tie it spiritually. You know, like there's all different ways that we should, we should block our time. I'm a big proponent of um, adding feelings to things, right? So that's the reason why I, I love when we choose our power words, because we're adding a feeling to what we want to accomplish. Um, once feelings get involved, it's, I think it's more of a needle mover because it's not so numb or uh, generic, right? We're adding something to it to move it forward. Great tips. Um, having a dream team is beautiful for productivity and um, really spending the time to learn new things, right? It's, it's energizing, switching it up. I always would listen to self-help books and business development books and all constantly to the point where like, I can't, I need a break for a while from this. Right. So I started um, listening to this author that talks about the women in the past, like Einstein's wife and what a amazing role she had in his success. Um, so like she, Marie Benedict, is the author's name and she's just phenomenal so i start every time i go for a walk i plug into my book and that's you know i add a feeling to that i'm excited to go for a walk because i want to hear the next chapter finding those things to help you be productive okay um so i'll i'll map out those tips in the email that i send out to everybody um and then just allowing ourselves to regroup during this time we're right now in uh, the eye of the storm, I'm calling it. And when you're in the middle or at the eye of the storm, that's where it is the calm, calmest, right? So we've, we've kind of settled in a little bit. We may be getting a little antsy and we might be in that tornado, but we're right in that eye of the storm. And I really am trying to um, enjoy this moment because when this is over, we go back. And I'm trying to um, analyze what I want to happen while I'm in the eye of the storm. So when the storm is over, I could keep this calmness. And that is really about regrouping our thought process. Um, 
still having our schedule you know is really important when we're regrouping through this time still trying to get up getting dressed i i said i vowed to myself a couple of times a week at least i would put pants on with a waistband and not yoga pants because <laughs> i don't want to come out of this eye of the storm and not be able to fit my jeans okay so because how easy is that if you throw yoga pants on every day and then you go to put dress pants on and you're like hmm i wonder what happened even though i'm walking much more i'm doing virtual workouts with victoria because she's my trainer and i usually do it in person but we're doing virtual workouts twice a week now so that's that's really awesome i love how that came out of all of this so take some time to think about what you want on the other side of this and see what you're doing right now to help sustain that once life wants to remove our boundaries again that's that's the key is just find what you're going to do to sustain all of this um and continue to build your schedule out to make you happy you know make you happy and not everybody else it's okay and it's not selfish because the more we spend on making ourselves happy everybody else around us what's that saying if mama's happy everybody's happy <laughs> right so <laughs> working on stuff like that uh, will truly truly help elevate our days moving forward so i am just so excited about our conversation this morning and so many great tips came out of it. Thank you for sharing. Um, this will be, what's today? April, April 9th, 2020. We're already in the, going into the second week of the second quarter. So to be productive for this second quarter, have your plan ready for what Q2 looks like for you, personally and inside your business. Um, again, go out to the website, Download your roadmap to sanity. That will help you understand what you want the second quarter to actually be. Um, and it was great seeing you too. And um, just many blessings for a happy um, Easter. If you're celebrating Easter, if not, happy Passover or whatever you're selling, celebrating. Have an amazing, amazing week and uh, weekend. And until next time, thank you so much for joining me. Bye. Thank you.